I'm Reverend Karen Lumley from St. Andrews River Heights United Church. And I want to thank everyone who's participating in the worship service this morning. Thanks to Derek for planning the solos and all those who are participating. For Wes for playing and for accompanying the um, musicians. For our soloist, Nolan Keller. For Heather Kozak, who will also sing a solo with our hymn. And for Fred Cross for directing all of this in StreamYard. And of course, our reader from Westward, Ava Dice. Welcome to everyone from St. Andrews and from Westward, especially. We want to thank you for coming and being a part of our service. And for anyone else who might be joining us across the country or across the city, welcome. Grab a cup of coffee, come sit down, relax, and enjoy our time together. Now, there's lots of announcements, and I'd like to draw your attention to some of them. Um, I'd like us to remember the Bowles family in our prayers as King Kingsley passed away suddenly this week, and also the Smith family and the Kuznick family um, in the loss of a sudden death of their son and grandson. And his name is Micah. Also, remember the friends of Doris Hearn, who will be celebrating her life this week. She passed away in July. And Betty Lormer has moved to Ontario, and Roy Druid is on his way tomorrow. He is moving the house is sold, so he is also leaving us. Also, uh, we a church and a and a people who want to celebrate. So we want to celebrate the wedding of our office manager, um, Charlotte Lindsay, and Michael, her now husband, um, Cuthbert, who were married yesterday. And also for the baptism, I officiated a baptism, a home baptism, and uh, it was outside yesterday. It was a beautiful day um, for the Sinclairs and for Lily, who was baptized, and her parents, Andrew and Allison. Also, don't forget to sign up for the PLGs, the parking lot gatherings. There is a parking lot at the back of the church, and I'd like to offer that for people who would like to come and just kind of in social distance mingling, um, connect with one another. Also, food is needed for One Just City. Contact myself or Charlotte in the office for more details on that. Also, um, if you have any announcements during the week, please do not hesitate to contact me. Let us continue our worship together in our centering words. When all seems to be lost, God is most near to us. Our call to worship today has a response that will pop up on the screen. Please join me. When hatred and division separates us, response. God's love binds us together. When quarrels estrange us from one another, response. Christ's light shows us the way to reconciliation. When we feel excluded and left out, response. The Spirit's peace eases our pain. When all hope of fellowship seems lost, God's grace restores our hope. Come, let us worship God who makes us as one. <clears throat> In our candle lighting, you can see the Christ candle and the rainbow candle just behind me. Before we began, I lit the peace candle, which we often lit symbolizing peace that we so desire in our world. Oh, what a lovely light. It is the light of Christ in our midst. We are filled with this light, the light of Christ. Let us light the Christ candle. Oh, what a lovely light. It is the light of the rainbow candle in our midst. We are called to be this light the light of inclusiveness and welcome for all. Let us pray. Holy God, here we are, ready to celebrate this day. Open our minds to possibility. Open our hearts to love freely. Open our hearts to each other. Be with us in our worship today. Amen. 
Now, today we have a special honor. I want to welcome Nolan Keller to St. Andrews as one of our new tenors. He will be sharing his gift of music and ministry of music with us today in a solo. Welcome and thanks, Nolan, for being part of us. Nolan sings a litany, a poem by Langston Hughes, set to the music by John Musto. It has a powerful message. Let us hear the words. Our scripture reading is Matthew 15, and it is read by Ava Dice from Westbury. The Canaanite woman's faith. Jesus left the place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sison. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the food that falls from their master's table. Then... 
Jesus answered, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Let us pray. God, we thank you that we can hear your words. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Give us ears to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you're in your kitchen and you're looking out the window because the kids are outside playing. All of a sudden, you hear the squeal of car, of car tires. And you don't remember leaving your home, but you know you jumped and ran outside because your child was out there riding a bicycle. Now, as a parent, you want to protect your children. You see the bicycle on one side of the driveway and you see your child sitting there. You run and embrace her because she's crying. She's okay. The car did not hit her, but scared her as it did you. As a parent, you want to protect your child. That's what the Canaanite woman did. Now, all of us know people who speak the truth, who are very blunt, who don't sugarcoat things, who call it like it is. They call a spade a spade. Now, some of us like that because we like to be told how things really are. Others shy away from that because they, they really don't like the blunt honesty. The Canaanite woman called a spade a spade. And in this story, it's a story of a woman who cares for her daughter, who is having convulsions, or in the biblical terms, demons. And as a parent, you must understand how it would be to have your child so sick all of the time. She, she just didn't know what to do. She had seen the doctors. She had done everything within her power to have her child healed. Now we must understand she's not an Israelite and even though she's a follower of Jesus and believes in who and what Jesus speaks of, Jesus does not have to listen to her because she is not an Israelite. The culture of the day said that Jesus did not have to deal with the non-Israelites. And so this woman is persistent and she she uses the crowd to her advantage. She follows Jesus and she calls upon Jesus and she says to him, Son of David, have mercy on me. And when she calls upon the Son of David, she's realizing that she's calling on Jesus to remember the reputation of the Son of David and also his lineage, that he is related to David. And David's reputation is also on the line. Jesus at, few, at first doesn't pay any attention. But the woman is persistent. She's not going to give up. She's not going to stop. What has she got to lose? And so she calls upon Jesus again. And Jesus says to her, even the food that's for the children is thrown to the dogs. That's a nasty thing to say. Seems unlike the Jesus that we normally speak of and know. The woman does not stop. She is persistent even when the disciples want Jesus to get, get this woman gone, get her away. But she persists. And so she has a comeback and she says to Jesus, even the dogs eat from the master's hand. Jesus says to her, your daughter is healed. Mercy is shown to her. And she believes, not because her faith is in what she believes, but her faith is in who she believes. She believes and is loyal to Jesus. She is loyal to him, no matter if he healed her child or not. For the culture of the day was one in which you were loyal to who you believed in. That was the Eastern culture. Faith was not so much what you believed, but in whom you believed 
and how you acted out that belief. Actions were important. She was persistent in what she believed. In our day and age, there's many movements. There's the Black Lives Matter movement and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, movements that are causing people, calling people to recognition, to accountability. Who holds us accountable? Who in our context calls out those who need to be held accountable? To those in positions of power, to those who are leaders in our country, in our land, in our church, in our world, who calls them to accountability. The persistent woman, the Canaanite woman did not give up. And I like to believe that Rosa Parks is a woman who's a modern day Canaanite woman. When she sat on that bus, she said she didn't want to start a movement, but what she did she said was, I was simply tired of the injustices in my world. And over the summer, I have been reading a book of hers called Reflections by Rosa Parks. And in it, she says, there is work to be done. We need to pray. We need to found a nation on faith. We need to help the oppressed. We need to help those who are criminals, who are in need. We need to build a nation founded on the principle of faith in God, in a God who will listen because we are a persistent people. And she says in her book, my message to the world is that we might come together and live as one. There is one world, and yet we as a people have treated the world as if it were divided. We cannot allow the gains we have made to erode. Although we have a long way to go, I do believe we can achieve what Dr. King's dream of a better world was. From time to time, I catch a glimpse of that world. I can see a world where children do not learn hatred in their homes. I see a world where mothers and fathers have the last and most important word. I see a world in which one respects the rights of one's neighbors. I see a world in which all adults protect the innocence of children. I see a world where people do not call each other names based on the color of their skin. I see a world free of acts of violence. I see a world in which people of all races and religions work together to improve the quality of life for everyone. I see this world because it exists in small pockets of this country and in a small pocket of every person's heart. We will look to God and work together, not only here, but everywhere. Then others will see this world too and help to make it a reality. Be that persistent voice that is calling people to action, that calls us to action, to live in loyalty to the one who calls us to be. Amen. Let us sing prayerfully with Heather Kozak, hymn number 509, The Lord of Sea and Sky. There seems to be a glitch right now, so I'm going to wait a moment and, and see what happens. It's the joy of technology. We'll see if we have Heather Kozak singing, I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
let us pray and may our response be. And when you hear, Lord, hear our prayer, your response will be, and in your mercy, answer. Let us pray. Let us imagine a new community of humankind, all people's lives living in compassion, all people's living in compassion and respect for each other. Lord, hear our prayer and in your mercy, answer. Help us to become agents of change. Even when technology doesn't work, we will be people of prayer and faith and persistence who like the persistent Canaanite woman never gave up. Lord, hear our prayer and in your mercy answer. Be with those who are grieving the loss of someone they love. We think of the Bowles family in the recent and unexpected death of Kingsley, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a brother and friend. Be with the Smith and Kuznick family in the loss of their son and grandson, Micah. Comfort friends of Doris Hearn who celebrate her life this week. Lord, hear our prayer and in your mercy answer. Be with our community ministries of One Just City and the work they do with Winnipeg's most vulnerable. Help them with volunteers to continue on the work and be safe. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love answer. We pray for our world the disasters of tornadoes, fires, floods, and devastations of the world all around us. Lord, hear our prayer and in your mercy answer. May we be a people of faith who will persist in justice and mercy for our world to end violence and hatred. Help us also to be a people who celebrate. We want to celebrate the baptism of Lily Sinclair and her proud parents, Allison and Andrew Sinclair. We also want to celebrate the marriage of Charlotte Lindsay and Michael Cuthbert and bless and ask you, God, to bless them. Lord, hear our prayer and in your mercy answer. And teach us to pray as you taught the disciples to pray. Our Father and our Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of dreams sends us out into the world to love one another. The God of love sends us forth to stop divisions, to heal divisions. The God of peace sends us forth to bring peace to a world that is so in need of a world. Amen. Mm -hmm.